Coming up, I'm gonna show you how I built my own Kydex press so I can start building some Kydex sheets and holsters. So stick around. Hi, it's the OCD Hunter bringing you tips, tricks, DIY hacks, and other useful ways that my OCD can help make your life a little bit more simpler. I was in talks with a company who was thinking about sponsoring the channel, and part of that, they were gonna get me a Kydex Press. Unfortunately, with all this COVID-19 thing, the talks got put on hold. So, instead, I decided to move forward to go ahead and build my own DIY Kydex Press so I could bake some sheaths for some knives that were about to come in that I'm gonna do some reviews on. And being who I am, I didn't wanna spend a lot of money, so I just used items we had around the house. If you wanna to try to build this Kydex Press, what I will do is I'll put a list of the items down in the description. And if they're available on Amazon, I'll put links to them as well. So if you wanna support the channel, check the links below. The first thing needed was foam. Now you can buy Kydex Forming Foam off of Amazon, which I'll have a link to also. But I already had these foam squares that interlock for a padded floor. So I just decided to go with them. I wanted the press to be about 12 inches by 12 inches so it could handle larger knife blades. And I thought that these foam squares would be perfect because they're around 24 inches by 24 inches. My concern was knowing that I needed the flat side to be used in the forming of the Kydex, I was going to have to glue the sides that look like diamond plate together. And because of that, I was afraid I wouldn't get them to glue together real well. So yes, being cheap and instead of buying the Kydex foam, I thought I could make these work. I pulled out two planers, one that had a flat blade and the other had more of a blade like a cheese grater. I experimented with these and found that if I used the flat blade planer, I could remove the diamond plate humps and then use the other planer to sand off any of the rough edges left. As you can see, it worked out really well. Plus, it roughened up the edges to allow something for the adhesive to stick to. So I went over both pieces and removed the humps by using the single blade planer first and then with the other planer to finish the surface. Next, I used some spray adhesive to glue them together. I sprayed both panels and let them sit until tacky. I used the back of my knuckle as the directions explain to make sure it was tacky and then placed one on top of the other. I used the other two mats I had to protect the ones I was gluing and then placed two heavy toolboxes on top of them and allowed the adhesive to set. I allowed it to dry for 24 hours. Once dry, I used a straight edge and a very sharp knife to remove the puzzle piece edges used for connecting the tiles together. I then marked the center point in both directions and cut it into fourths. The foam sections ended up being about 11 and a quarter inches by 11 and a quarter inches, which worked out perfect. I had a 12 by one left over from doing a facelift on my fireplace. So my thought was to cut one down to 14 inches, then use a one by two along with the two by four as the back plate where I could attach the hinges to, and then cut the other 12 by one to 12 and a half inches. This way the top plate would be even with the back plate to screw in the hinges and the top plate would also come out the same distance as the bottom plate. I put the bottom piece of wood on the 1x2 and the 2x4. I did the same on the front side as well so it sat level so I could align the back properly. I pre-drilled five holes so I didn't split the wood and then used a countersink to allow the heads of the screw to not get in the way when it lays flat. I then screwed the back onto the bottom. Next, I flipped it over and placed the top board on a 2x4 and a 4x4 so I could align it with the back to screw on the hinges. I drilled pilot holes in the back and drilled the hinges on the back plate. Then positioned the top plate and screwed the hinges on it. The only screws I had for the top plate were just a little long. 
So I used my Dremel to grind down the tips. And that's how I built the press. When I get my next knife in, I'll test this press out to see how well it does to make a Kydex sheet. So until then, I'm the OCD Hunter and I hope that my continual painstaking practice of changing, fixing, and improving on ideas will help you out in your endeavors. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell next to the subscribe button to get notified of new videos. Comments are always welcome.